So, today we are going to learn about plants. Not because I don't think you know what plants are. You have a pretty good idea, I hope. Uh, but because I want you to start thinking about plants in a way that would connect to them and make you think about some things that maybe you wouldn't consider to be plants before and realize why they are. Or at least understand why a tree, a blade of grass, and other small things are all related as plants in the same way. So, scientists gather information about the ancestors of land plants because plants started initially in the water and slowly evolved to live on land through studying their fossils, chemically and and that, uh, analyzing the pigment in them called chlorophyll, which is what makes them green and helps them do photosynthesis, uh, analysis of genetic, and the analysis of their genetic material, because plants also have DNA like you. Uh, because they are closely related, plants and green algae belong to the plant kingdom. Nearly all plants are autotrophic, meaning that they produce their own food using this, using the sun. Uh, there are very few plants that are not multicellular, and all plants are surrounded by something called a cell wall, but we'll get to that. So, within the plant cells, sunlight gives the plant its food, uh, uses a process called photosynthesis, where carbon dioxide is broken down to make food, water, and oxygen. Oh, I'm sorry mess that up. Carbon dioxide and water make food and oxygen, which is part of why plants need water. Uh, this takes place in a little organelle in the cell called a chloroplast, that little green stacky looking thing in the diagram. Only plant cells have chloroplasts. If it's got a chloroplast, that makes it a plant cell. Uh, another difference that plant cells have make them different from animal cells, um, they have cell walls. Outside the cell membrane, they have a very hard shell that separates it from the environment. That's why plants are generally rigid and stand without using muscles. Um, each plant cell also has one large vacuole, kind of like a storage room inside of it, that can get bigger, uh, can get, be filled up with water, waste, or food. Uh, with, like I said before, with the exception of some green algae, most plants are multicellular. These cells group together in similar groups into something called a tissue. When you think about how you're, you have skin tissue, muscle tissue, you don't think about bone tissue, but plants are the same way. They have tissues of similar cells that organize together and form structures, do a specific function. We will need this knowledge about tissues later because this is not just something that plants have. This is something that lots of different living things have. Mess that up, but oh well. So, what do plants need to live on land? Like I said, initially, plants all lived in the water and slowly evolved to live on land. So, because it's easier to live in the water. If you need water to live, it's easier to live in water. So, how do they survive? Well, they must have a way to get water. Uh, they must have a way to get the random nutrients they need, like phosphorus, from the environment around them. Uh, they must be able to keep that water in there because if you get your energy from the sun and you live somewhere where it's dry, it's going to be easy to dry out, so you need a structure to help you with that. They need to support themselves so they can stand in the high wind, and it doesn't always work the whole way. Uh, you need to be able to transport materials around yourself if you are going to be a large plant, and you're going to need to be able to reproduce and have new plants. Uh, plants obtain water and other nutrients through from the soil through their roots. Uh, they retain this water by having a waxy waterproof layer on the outside of them called a cuticle. A cuticle keeps the water in. There are only specific little pores in the bottom of the plant at certain spots to let water and uh, oxygen and CO2 in and out. Uh, the vascular system is a large tube-like system of structures that allows this water, minerals, and food to move through the plant. Essentially, I always thought of it like straws. They have these groups of tissues that kind of function like straws to bring water up from the ground and nutrients up from the ground to help it get into the leaves where it needs it. Uh, land plants also have lots of adaptations that let them live well in dry areas, which is why you see cacti and things 
with a, that look different than plants, say, in Camden. Okay, we're going to classify plants. All right, we, remember we classify things to make them easier to understand, easier to study. There are three basic kinds of plants. The non-vascular plants, the vascular seedless plants, and the seeded plants. So we're going to start with the non-vascular plants. Um, these are ones that you probably don't see very much of, you don't think very much of. Um, they do not have that vascular tissue to move things around, so they are generally very small. They grow very low to the ground. They have thin cell walls. They do not have roots and obtain their water and things directly from their surroundings. So there are three groups within this. They have mosses, which you've probably seen, liverworts, and hornworts. I don't think you've seen either of those. I don't think I've seen either of those and been like, hey, that's a hornwort. But moss has these thin structures called rhizoids that help them grab onto things, which is why moss, if it grows on a stone, will be pretty well stuck to that stone unless you peel it off. Um, this absorbs nutrients, uh, keeps it stable. Mosses like to live where it's very wet also, just like liverworts and hornworts. So on top of the moss, there are these stem-like stalk structures with kind of like leaves, but not really, with a capsule that has these spores that it uses to reproduce. Mosses grow in low, shady spots on rocks and trees. Liverworts grow like a thick crust on moist rocks or along or in soil along streams. Hornworts live in moist soil, often with pl grass plants. So you may have actually seen hornworts and liverworts and not just thought about it. Just not thought, hey, that's a hornwort, because that's not a thought I've ever had. Maybe you're different from me. Um, vascular, seedless vascular plants, like I said, are different. They have a true vascular system. They get taller. However, they do not have seeds to reproduce. There are two kinds of vascular tissue. You have xylem and phloem. Xylem carries water. Phloem carries food. I always remember it because it kind of sounds like phloem starts with an F, even though it doesn't. So phloem carries food, xylem carries water, and that is how nutrients make their way around the plant. Now, what kinds of plants are seedless on vascular? Well, you have ferns, which you maybe saw, club mosses, and horsetail. They all share two characteristics. They have true vascular tissue inside, xylem and phloem, and instead of using seeds, they produce reproduce using spores. All vascular plants have roots, stems, and leaves. A fern's leaves are called fronds. The upper surface of the frond has a cuticle, remember that waxy layer we talked about, to prevent water from being lost. Ferns do very well in shaded areas with more soil, moist soil, and club mosses grow in moist soil near woods and streams. Now we're going to get to the last kind of vascular plant, the seed plants. And these are probably the ones you are most familiar with. That's my dog rubs all over the side of my neck. Seed plants have vascular tissue and they use pollen and seeds to reproduce. A seed Seeded plants have roots, stems, and leaves. Pollen are tiny structures that essentially are sperm cells that fly through the air and get the plant's DNA to other plants. A seed is a young plant with a protective coating around it. That's why plants grow out of it. So pine cones are a good example. So what kinds of seeded plants are there? Well, there's actually two. There's gymnosperms, which are seed, seed plants that produce a naked seed, seeds without fruit, essentially. Any seed you've seen without fruit is a gymnosperm. So pine cones would be a gymnosperm. Uh, most flowers are gymnosperms, unless they produce with a berry of some kind. So you have four different kinds of gymnosperms, cyads, conifers, ginkgos, and Ganetophytes. Don't worry about those names. Just, just for you to know to have heard. Uh, an angiosperm is a flowering plant that produces seeds with closed-in fruits. Uh, they something called a coilodon or seed leaf is the raw material 
that turns into the fruit. You have monocots, which have one coiladon, and dicots that have two. So that is our basic rundown of plants, what they are and how we classify them. From here, we will g gather some evidence and look at what else we can do with plants. Hopefully, we'll get to go outside and look at some plants today. So I will see you.